Hello, my name is Matt Max. Welcome back to this chapter about digital audio recording. This time, compression and single band compressors. I decided to not film myself for this specific episode, partially because I'm hungover and partially because it doesn't make any sense for this particular episode. I can better explain it in the actual program now. What you see here is a recording of my voice. Let's actually listen to it. I would be very careful in covering a complete wall with something that burns easily and that kills you when it burns. Now, where's the problem with this recording? The problem with this recording, like you will always have in recording voice, is that you have loud parts. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. You have loud parts. This one is like, here's, down here is the volume. That's like minus two decibels, and then I have quiet parts that I'm like minus 13. And that sucks, because it means that the quiet parts might actually be too quiet to be actually heard correctly by the people who are listening to your videos. So what you want to do is you want the quiet parts to be louder, right? So what do you do? it? I could, of course, just go ahead and boost it like this, but then I have a problem. The problem is that the loud parts now clip. I would be very careful if... So that's not what we want. So what people actually do is that they go ahead and they take the loud parts and make the loud parts more quiet. Now, that's okay if I do it with one part, but if you actually look up here, you see the yellow area? Yeah, that's this. If you actually zoom out, that's a whole file, right? Um, that's a lot of loud parts to edit out by hand. In fact, I would argue that you cannot do it by hand. So that is why there is software for that, and the software is called a compressor. Now, if you compress a bit, it does just what I just told you. It takes a lot of parts, it makes them more quiet, and that's it. But if you compress a lot, it can actually be used as an effect to get a specific sounding recording. It's this really sick, rich broadcaster radio voice. That's a heavily compressed voice. And you can do that yourself with a compressor, so let's Go ahead and let's start the compressor. It's on German actually, but it's pretty simple, so it doesn't really matter. So, a compressor has four main settings. Now, first setting is threshold, next setting is ratio, attack, and release. So, those are the four settings. That's that down here, it's just uh, amplification, it doesn't matter. Now, what do all of those settings mean? They're actually really simple. The so first two settings tell you how much of your recording is affected and how much you affect it. So how strong is your effect and on how much of your recording do you apply the effect. First one, threshold, tells you how much is affected. The threshold tells the compressor when it actually kicks in. In this case it kicks in whenever a sound is above 15, a minus 15 decibels. So that's actually true for the majority of things, so let's actually go down to, let's say, 9, so I can explain it better. You see, this line is 9 decibels, so only everything above 9 decibels would be affected by this compressor. And actually, let's go ahead and do it. And yeah, you see, it's right. Only stuff about 9 decibels was affected and cut down. If I would put it down to a ridiculous low number, like minus 30, basically everything is affected and put on one single volume, right? So that just tells you how much of your file is affected and at what volume it actually should start to compress. So minus, minus 12, maybe minus 15, that's a good, that's a good setting for me. But it obviously depends on your recording. What you should do is you should actually look at it. You should look at it and then you're like, okay, you know, the quietest parts like this one, this one, this one. That's about minus 15, so minus 15 should be my setting. Then the next part is how strong your effect is. Now, if I put this to 1 and do it, shocker, nothing happens. Why? What? Wh wh why didn't anything happen? I just compressed it. Well, you know. This is the strength of your effect. A strength of 1 means that nothing happens, because it means that 1 decibel above minus 15 is changed by one decibel, so it's not changed at all. Whereas if I put it to 10, uh, it means that 10 decibel above minus 15 decibels will be changed so that it's only one decibel above minus 15 decibels. So let me actually just show it to you. It's easiest when I show it to you. So 
if this is a really low number, like 2, just look what happens with this right here. It got cut a little bit, but it did not got cut by much. You see that I still have quiet and loud parts, and the difference between quiet and loud parts is still there. And actually, if you listen to it, I would be very careful in covering a complete wall with something that burns easily and that kills you when it burns. I you see, or hear, that the volume is now way more constant, but the vo voice is not really changed, right? It's because this is not a really strong compression. If I would put this up to something stronger, like 10, then it's way stronger compression. Now, the difference between the quietest and loudest parts is way smaller. I would be very careful in covering a complete wall with something that burns easily and that kills you when it burns. So if we actually go ahead and try a different, oops, try a different settings and listen to it and make it a little bit more so we can hear it, you will de definitely hear the difference between a relaxed setting like this one. I would be very careful in covering a complete wall with something that burns easily. Where's this? A really, really hardcore compression, like maybe this one. And that kills you when it burns. I would be very careful in covering a complete wall with something that burns easily and that kills you when it burns. You hear right away that this hardcore compression sounds very dense, very rich. This voice suddenly has weight behind it. That is what radio broadcasters do. They have quite, quite high compression. Now, I also had a little bit of echo and you had a little bit of noise, but you know, that's just because those are really, really, really high settings. There are two more values you can change, attack and release, and those are the two values you can mess up the most. Basically, attack tells you how long it takes the compressor to actually start compressing after it crossed the threshold. So it scans the file and then I'm like, and then the compressor is like, oh, I just crossed the threshold. Now I'm going to wait one millisecond, and then I'm going to start compressing. For voice, this should be quite low, like 1 to maybe 10. And this release means how long the compressor keeps compressing after it's below the threshold again. So after it's here, how long should it keep compressing? If you make this really low, it sounds very aggressive, okay? If you put it higher, it sounds more relaxed. So usually for a voice, what you want to do is you want to have this between maybe 1 and 10, and you want to have this between 300 to 500. Okay. Stay in this time window and you will get, get good results. So that is how to use a compressor in post, but you can actually also use a compressor directly while recording. Now, it depends on the software that you have. My software can do it. I don't know if your software can do it, but mine can. You can also, if you have a good mixer, you can also do it on the mixer. So here, Right now, I can, you know, have a low-cut filter, I can have all kinds of stuff, but I usually only have a low-cut filter. And then I have an effects rack that I can turn on and off. And in my effects rack, I have a compressor. And as you see down here, I have an in signal, I have an out signal. And you see that the out signal, even if I'm loud, the out signal doesn't really change that much. Because the compression makes it so that the volume is more constant. So why would you do that? Why would you have compression right while you are recording? Well, it makes it so much easier for you to dial in the right values for microphone gain and so on and so forth. In the end, you want to get pretty close to zero decibels, but you never want to get above zero decibels. Now, if you do not use a compressor, that can be really difficult because now I'm talking, I'm changing my gain so that it's just not clipping. Like right now it's not cl clipping anymore, maybe a little bit less. Okay, right now it's not clipping, but then suddenly I'm louder. And then suddenly it is clipping. That sucks. That means you have to go way, way, way down and you don't really know how far down you actually have to go to prevent yourself from clipping when you're loud. That is so much easier when you have a compressor, you can go to like minus 6 or minus 8 with your in signal and then you just put it through a compressor and that means that your loudest parts won't be as loud anymore. So you won't clip. 
so it's easier for you to dial in the right values. And once you record it yourself, you have a nice constant, a nice constant volume over the whole recording. So that concludes the lecture about compression. And next time, we will actually talk about something really cool, which is multiband compression. Because with multiband compression, you can completely change your voice around. My name is Phil Mad Max. Thanks for watching this episode. And tune in next time.